Recently, a woodworkery maker YouTuber by the name of Frank Howarth released a couple of videos about his Frankenvac. If you haven't seen these videos or his channel, you should go check him out because everything he does is brilliant. And he has like 500 radial arm saws. Well, I've been experimenting with a Frankenvac of my own over the past couple of months off camera. Here's some of it. Like I said, I've been experimenting with it, and with any good experiment comes findings. So today I'm going to share with you some of those findings while I build the latest iteration of my dust separator collector cart thing. I haven't really nailed out a solid name yet. Join me! This is my initial small dust collector setup. Well, most of it anyway. A lot of parts missing. Like the dust deputy dust separator cyclone that's set on top of this bucket. It's pretty simple. The air and the dirt would be sucked in the cyclone. 99% of the dirt would be separated out by the cyclone and dropped down to this bucket. And all of the air would be then sucked from the cyclone to the shop vac where the remaining 1% of dirt or whatever would be separated out by the shop vac filter. And if you're not aware, the purpose of a dust separator cyclone is to separate out the majority of the dirt and debris and dust before it gets to your shop vac filter and clogs it up. It's really that simple. And this whole thing is sitting on top of a cart that I slapped together in like an afternoon or something. This setup was crappy, but I mean, it worked. All I had to do was hold a bucket and a shop vac, and it did that 80% of the time. I made the cart too narrow, and it was a little bit tippier than I would have liked, but whatever. The only thing that really bothered me, aside from the tippiness, was the shop vac itself. Because all the dirt goes into this bucket, why do I need this whole shop vac bucket just to hold a couple grams of fine dust? So I got to thinking, can I cut out the middleman here, make this a more space efficient setup. And that thought process led me to this Frankenstein's monster. I used my Ocelot Vibrating Multisaw thing to cut the blower motor straight out of my shop vac head. Those things really work wonders on plastic and plop it straight down on top of my dust separator cyclone to do exactly what I said and cut out the middleman. I also replaced the bucket with this container just because I wanted to try out something that's lower profile and clear so I could see into it. This whole thing isn't exactly stable, but like I said, it's an experiment. Unfortunately, this setup 
didn't work. Almost entirely because of one reason, which is this dust separator cyclone isn't as effective as separating out dust as I thought it was, which caused two issues. The first of which is that any dust that bypassed this cyclone, which as it turned out was rather a lot, would be projectile vomited out of this outlet of the blower and then be spread around all over the shop, which was annoying. Now this problem was easy to fix. I just got a filter bag this one and stuck it over the outlet to catch all that dust that was flying out. The second problem was this blower housing has a grate on the intake side to prevent stuff from being sucked into the impeller and damaging it, and that grate kept getting clogged up by chips that were bypassing the cyclone. So it seemed like I would use the thing for a whole five seconds and then the grate would be clogged up and it'd stop sucking in anything, which was annoying. And this problem was a lot harder to solve. The first solution I tried was to block off the bottom of this outlet tube in the cyclone with a small piece of screen. But of course that didn't work. The screen just blocked up instead of the grate on the inside. I don't know what I was expecting there. The second solution I tried was a different type of screen. Yes, this is stainless steel. It's a very fine mesh. And instead of just capping off the end of this tube with the stuff, I extended the tube downward with a cylindrical section of this stainless steel mesh and then capped off the end with a wooden plug. I was hoping the dust and debris and stuff would swirl around this and be sucked down by the cyclone into the bucket rather than clogging up the cylindrical section of screen. But I was wrong. It still clogged up the screen mesh. Not quite as quickly as the screen that was just on the end of the plug, but it still clogged up pretty quickly, so that didn't work either. The last solution I tried was to forget about adding screens or anything that can plug up and instead just try to improve the efficacy of this dust separator cyclone. And the way I did that was I cut out a circular piece of sheet metal and added it to the inside in an air ramp shape. So hopefully the dust and chips and everything that gets sucked into this cyclone instead of spinning around at the top like they sometimes did would be forced down into the cyclone and into the bucket by this air ramp. I was basically just copying the design from the bigger Dust Deputy and the Clearview Mini Cyclone. They both have air ramps in them, so I thought, although mine is crude, that I would add that in there just to see if it worked. Now, did it? In the end, no, because chips and stuff still bypassed this Cyclone and made it into the grate and plugged it up. So it didn't work in the end, but the time it took for chips to clog up this grate was greatly increased. So it seems to have some effect but not enough of effect. I need really, for this setup to work, I need this cyclone to be almost 100% effective and have no chips or debris get sucked into that blower motor. Maybe this whole bypassing the middleman setup and putting the blower motor straight on top of the cyclone would work with a different type of cyclone. Maybe it would work with the bigger dust deputy that has an air ramp, or maybe it would work with any of the Clearview cyclones. I don't know but it didn't work with this. So eventually I just gave up on this whole cut out the middleman idea.
And here's the latest iteration of my small dust collector cart. You know, the thing you've been watching me build through this entire video. And as you can see, I went back to basics on this one. In essence, this is still just a shop vac sitting next to a bucket with a cyclone on top on a cart. Obviously, I've made it a much more concise package and I fancied it up a bit. But your dust collector doesn't have walnut accents. Nor should it. Let's go over some of the features of this thing. Shop vac. I very well could have reused the old blower that I surgically removed from my old shop vac. But that would have looked a little weird on top of this box. And I got this shop vac for free. Some people were throwing it away and it was on the side of the road. They were throwing it away because it was too noisy. So I took it home and removed the chunk of hair, or whatever that was, out of the impeller that was throwing it off balance and voila! Free shop vac that works perfectly fine. So then I decapitated it and slapped its head on a box. This vacuum head just clips on the either side of the box here and that groove you saw me cut around the edge earlier is for the foam seal. This head has a little lip around the edge and it fits perfectly into that groove with the foam seal in it. Forms a nice airtight seal. I've got quite a few of these glass strips in my shop. I don't know if they were old windows in the shop or what, but they came with the place. So I used a couple of them to add some viewing windows to my dust bucket so I can see how full it is and I can stare at the dust swirling around in there if I'm bored. If you look at this from the outside, it looks like the shop vac bucket is still much larger than the dust collection bucket, but in reality, the dividing line is around here. I try to put it as close to the shop vac filter as possible to bias more room for the dust bucket, because after all, the only thing that's gonna be stored in this side is some fine dust and stuff that makes it through the cyclone and air. You watch me build this thing, you know this is a permanently enclosed box. I glued it all together and everything. So you may be wondering, how do I plan to empty the dust out of this thing? Well, I actually plan to suck out all the dirt with my bigger dust collector. And if that becomes too inconvenient or I start to hate it or whatever, then I'll have to think of something new. I was initially going to put in a just a drop-in bin to collect the dirt and stuff in, but I didn't do that for two reasons. One, That'd make the viewing windows on the side completely useless unless I made my drop-in bin out of glass or very clear plastic or something. And also, like I just said, the dividing line for the box is way over here. I couldn't make a drop-in bin because there's no lid over that area of the dust collection. So, it's all enclosed permanently. I'll suck out the dirt with a big dust collector and I think it'll be fine. One more little thing, this lid for accessing the dust collection tray is not secured in place. It's just sitting there with a nice foam seal around it. While I'm using the vacuum, I'm relying on the vacuum pressure to suck this lid down and hold it in place. And while I'm not using the vacuum, I'm basically just relying on gravity and maybe this PVC pipe up here to hold it in place. And the entire reason that I did not secure this thing down is because I was going to use these knobs here with some bolts coming up through it and then screw it, these knobs down to hold this lid in place, but I thought these knobs looked weird on the walnut and Baltic birch box. So I didn't put them on there. I'm just going to see how it works without any fasteners. <laughs> That's the entire reason. These knobs looked weird. Now that you know more about this thing, let's see it in action. I'm going to clean off my miter saw station here, which has about, I don't know, five months worth of dust buildup on the back of it. Try it out. Here's how much is in the dust bucket. And here's what made it into the shop back side. Almost nothing except this chunk of paper here. It's basically empty. Just a little bit of fine dust that's gathered around the corners. And there you have it, my small dust collector cart. Nothing fancy, just a box. But I'm really proud of the way this thing turned out and I think it has everything to do with how it looks because nothing I make turns out looking nice. I don't know why I chose a small shop vac cart to be the thing that I put all my pretties into, but whatever. Looks nice for, for now anyway. This thing will be kicked around in the dirt for its entire life, so it probably won't look this nice for long. Anyway, I'm happy with it. See you next time. Thanks for watching.